ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Leo is here. Now, allow me to explain something about this sugar that brings a lot of problems and misunderstanding that is actually called fructose. Now, generally, when you eat any type of carbohydrate, you will not absorb it in the way that you ate it. For example, if you eat ugali, you will not absorb ugali. <laughs> if you eat a fruit or a banana or a pineapple, you will not absorb a pineapple. You will break it down to the slightest or the simplest carbohydrate and then you absorb it into the bloodstream. And we have three simplest carbohydrates. So one is the fruit, the honey and the processed sugar, uh, the processed food sugar that is called fructose. Number two is the ugali, the rice and chapati sugar that is called glucose. This glucose is the one that most of you know. Number three is the milk sugar, either galactose or lactose. Okay, so these are the three sugars that will be absorbed into the bloodstream. And they are absorbed into the bloodstream to go and do different functions. However, the three have different metabolic pathways. They are broken down into different ways. For example, lactose will be converted to glucose and then all the pathway for glucose will ensue. Glucose is broken into ATP, you get the energy for the muscles. It is stored into the liver as glycogen and also excess of it is converted to fats and stored into the fat cells. So those are the three pathways for glucose. Let's talk about this animal called fructose. Now fructose, no cell in the body knows how to utilize it. I even wonder why you're told that fruits are, are healthy and they will tell you about the vitamins but we'll talk about vitamins uh, as we go on. So listen to this. So fructose is not utilized by any cells, not the brain cells, not the nerve cells, not the muscle cells. No cell can utilize fructose. Therefore, after it has been absorbed into the bloodstream, it is carried all the way to the liver. And in the liver, it is converted to three things. So it has three metabolic pathways. The major metabolic pathway is fructose is converted to triglycerides. Triglycerides are fats. And if you've done a lipid profile, you will see on that lipid profile, there's LDL, HDL, total cholesterol, and then triglycerides. These are the fats that are actually coming from you consuming fruits, from you consuming honey, from you consuming sugarcane, and the table sugar, because they all have fructose. Even the processed foods, fructose exists in the form of high corn fructose syrup. So that is the first channel. Now these fats have to be converted to, uh, have to, to be sent somewhere, because they cannot stay in the liver. The liver does not know how to store fats. So these fats will be packaged and sent into the fat cells. You continue being fat. So if you're targeting to lose weight, you're obese or overweight, you have metabolic syndrome like diabetes, hypertension, and insulin resistance to be specific, you adding fat into the system is actually a criminal. Okay? That is one. Metabolic pathway number two. In the liver, fructose is converted into the minor pathway to uric acid. Now remember the first, part, the first pathway converted fructose to fats and then exacerbated insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is the cause of failing kidneys. Underline that word failing kidneys because we're going to get to that. So you have taken in fructose. This fructose has been converted to fat given you insulin resistance. Now we are affecting the kidneys. And now metabolic pathway number two, we are converting the minor uh, part of the fructose to uric acid. All of you know very well that uric acid has never been a problem because it is excreted through the urine. However, now that we have failing kidneys because of insulin resistance, we are unable to excrete excess uric acid. So the uric acid that we are making from our fructose is going to accumulate in the system and the body has to store this somewhere or has to send it somewhere because it's going to be toxic in the blood. So we have to convert it and send it into the uh, joints and convert it into crystals. And those crystals are the ones that actually give you the gouty arthritis, the painful joints and the swollen joints. So then you end up blaming red meat uh, for what sugar has cost you and the sugar that is coming from the fruits. How many of your parents or how many of your relatives are suffering from arthritis? They are taking medication to manage symptoms of arthritis, the pain. But they are not recovering. They have dropped red meat, but nothing is happening. They are still on medication. They are still arthritic. Why? But they are consuming a lot of fruits in the name of fruit pudding. And they are thinking fruits are healthy because vitamin C is coming in to help them clear uh, excess toxins in the system. But they are still arthritic. Don't you ask yourself those questions? So that is metabolic pathway number two. Metabolic pathway number three, fructose can be converted to glucose 
and then gives you the three metabolic pathways for glucose again. And fat is part of that uh, pathway. So at the end of the day, fructose is largely converted to fats. And that is a problem to your system, okay? So if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to reverse diabetes, hypertension, all chronic conditions, including cancer, fruits become an enemy to you because they are feeding the system with glucose, they're feeding the system with fructose, and then they are continuing with the pathway of weakening your immune system. So they tell you fruits have vitamin C that will actually boost your immune system. But what they don't tell you is vitamin C has the same or near same chemical structure to fructose. They almost resemble, so they compete for the same absorption receptors in the gut. What does that mean? That means they are constantly competing for these receptors and the body is not stupid. The body will not take something that doesn't give it a reward. Just the same way I give you salt and sugar, you'll pick sugar because you'll feel good after eating the sugar. The body prefers something that gives it a reward of feeling good and that is fructose. So the body will take fructose and discard vitamin C. <laughs> That's the point. So when you're taking fruits, hoping that they have vitamin C, why don't you take vegetables which have vitamin C? Why? Why don't you take fermented cabbages? Why don't you take all these foods that are rich in vitamin C, including the lemon peels instead of the lemon juice? Why do you want the juice? Why do you want the fruit? Because you're a sugar addict in denial. Your doctor is a sugar addict in denial. And he wants you to be part of the scheme. He wants you to come back so that he can continuously exploit your pockets. And that's what they do. They keep on managing symptoms as they feed the diseases. Look at you going to the hospital to see your parents or your relatives in the woods carrying a whole bunch of fruits to them. Carrying the fruit juices that have fructose. And this is actually fructose is the number one cause of a fatty liver. Because remember I told you, when you convert it to fats and the liver does not like to store fats, it sends it into the fat cells. But the more you bring fructose in through fruits, through honey, through energy drinks, through soda and all that, the more the liver starts to accumulate fat. And that's where we get a fatty liver disease from. Okay? So then burning this fat has to mean you have to stop eating what you've been eating and then start fasting uh, to actually burn what you've already stored in the fat cells. And that's how we recover from a fatty liver disease. So if your doctor is constantly telling you to eat fruits because they have vitamin C, tell him, why don't I drop the fruits and eat the vegetables? Is that simple? So the body does not care about your feelings and emotions, about your love for fruits, about how you've been told. The body does not care. It is simple biochemistry that fructose will be broken into different metabolic pathways. And these pathways are just what I've just told you. So it's up to you to take a decision. Make that decision. You don't, you don't, there's no absolute need for you to consume fruits. I can tell you that for free. No absolute need because you still have vegetables. You'll get the vitamins from the vegetables. Okay. You still have all the fats. You still have the protein. You have the vegetables. You have all these things have the nutrients that you need for survival. Okay. <laughs> it's not a matter that you take sugar. That's just a sugar addiction. And of course, the doctors, the nutritionists and the doctors think that fructose is the natural sugar. But I'll tell you this for free. Do you think your body knows natural and synthetic? It doesn't. Just the same way your body does not know colors. So brown and white is just the same. As long as the content inside that brown or white chapati is glucose. The body knows glucose. It doesn't know colors. It doesn't know natural or synthetic. So when you're being lied to that, oh, you know, fruits are natural sugars. Oh, honey is natural sugar. Ask your doctor. What is the active component of honey? And what is the metabolic pathway to break down this honey? What do we get at the end of it? Because it's just fats. So as you substitute honey for sugar, you're just substituting sugar for sugar. As you take fruits and discard table sugar, you're taking the same thing. Okay? So please, unlearn. Unlearn these things. And these are the reasons why we are constantly trying to develop new treatment guidelines for diabetes and hypertension and even arthritis. But... The disease is still there. The cases are still on the rise. Even after all this research that we've done, the disease, uh, is uh, the numbers are actually on the rise. Why are they on the rise when we are doing the right thing? Why? Why are we eating fruits yet we are not surviving or recovering from diabetes? And now they will tell you, you know, this is in the genes. They will tell you, you know what, this is a lifetime disease and you have to take drugs for a lifetime because they are feeding the disease through the fruits. So I'm telling you for free, fruits are supposed to be seasonal. You eat them today, this month, you will eat them next year time like this. But now look at your fruit vendor. Even two, three fruits are in season all year. Watermelons, pineapples and mangoes are always in season. They are so sweet, they are so appealing. They don't get bad. They don't attract flies. Their seeds do not even regrow. Some of them don't even have seeds. They have no fiber and they are so sweet. And as you take them, you, sh you, are, you know very well, you're not taking them because of the vitamins. You're taking them because of the sugar. If I remove the sugar, you will not take those fruits. 
But if I remove the vitamins, you still take the fruits. So who is fooling who? And learn, and learn, and start thinking. Think, think beyond, think beyond what we have been told. Okay. Always do research, read, and then challenge your doctor. Let the fear go because the fear of us thinking that doctors know everything is what actually is messing us up. So ask your doctor questions. Do not leave that consultation room without asking these questions. I thought you should know.